All right, so um, on your paper, there's a bit of a table that goes with each of the graphs. Okay, now it's not necessarily that you have to construct a table every single time. There's just some certain patterns and things that I'm trying to point out to you. Now, can anybody tell me why the table starts with zero? Based on these functions, the square root of x, two square roots of x, why would the table start with zero? Why would I not have any negative values on there? You can take the square root of a negative number. So first of all, and you'll see under the graph, I have a place for the domain and for the range. Um, so the domain, y'all know that domain means it's all the x values that you can plug into the function that will give you a y value. So you can plug negative 5 in, but you're not going to get an answer out. So your domain here is that x is greater than or equal to 0 as long as your x value is at, is at least 0, 0 or bigger, then you're good. Now let me show you some interval notation. Okay, This is used very frequently. Um, they use it over at the college with, uh, in their pre-calc classes, we use it in AP Calc. Okay, so instead of a parenthesis, we use a square bracket because it is equal to zero. Okay, so we start zero is the smallest value that we can plug in, and we can plug anything in up to infinity. Now, we put a parenthesis beside infinity because infinity is not an actual number. Okay, it's the concept of the biggest number you can imagine, so it's not a specific number, so we can't put the square bracket around it because it, it can't equal that exact number. It's just going to continue on for forever. Okay, we'll talk about the range after we graph it because usually the range is easier to determine looking at the graph. Um, so you can kind of quickly fill in that table there <clears throat> when you take the square root of uh, 0, the square root of 0 is 0, the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, uh, and then I kind of ran out of numbers that are perfect squares based on the window. So the square root of 6 is uh, somewhere between 2 and 3. That's all I know. What, give me a couple of decimals. 4, 4. Okay, sounds good. And 8 is closer to 3. 2.82, thank you, okay? Now, I'm just kind of going at it from this perspective because this is how you can always graph a function when you don't know exactly what it looks like. You can start by making a table of values and plotting those points. So put those points on your graph, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, uh, 6, 2.44, and 8, 2.82, okay? Uh, now, you could also put it in your y equals and look at the graph to kind of get the general shape. Um, but if you did not know before now what the square root function looks like, this is the basic square root of x function. Okay, this is what it looks like. It does, quote unquote, appear out of nowhere. Okay, it does not exist when your x values are less than zero. That's where its starting point is the origin. And then you have values from that point on, so make sure that you put an arrow on the end of uh, this graph. Not at zero, zero. Zero, zero is the starting point, um, but on the other end, do put an arrow because it does continue. Um, so our range, the range refers to the y values that can be achieved by this function. So if we look at this, the minimum y value is zero, and we have values that are greater than that. So our range is also y is greater than or equal to 0, and you can write that in interval notation as well, from 0 to positive infinity. Okay, so let's look at what happens when we stick a coefficient in front of that square root of x. How does that change um, our function? So um, the y value at 0 is still the same you've got 2 times the square root of 0, it's still 0. Um, when we plug in 1, the square root of 1 is 1, but then we multiply it by 2. When you plug in 4, the square root of 4 is 2, then you multiply it by 2, so you get 4. 6, you've got 2 times the square root of 6, so that's 4.88. And 
for 8, 2 times the square root of 8, um, 5.64. Did I do that right? Okay. <clears throat> so we're still starting here at the origin, okay? But the difference is it still has the same shape. It's just what we would call a steeper rut, okay? Um, it increases a little bit faster than the other one did. And it's a little bit steeper. It's not quite as flat, but it still has curve, okay? Do not just connect these dots with straight lines. Um, the square root function is curved. We could have put a little bit more detail in here. We could have gotten um, the y value when x is 2, okay? We could have done the y value when x was 3. I was just trying to pick out some of the nice easy numbers to graph um, as opposed to all those decimal values, okay? So there is curvature to this function. Its domain is the same, okay? Even though the function is a little bit different, its domain is still x is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, its range is still the same. We have done nothing to change um, those characteristics of these graphs. Okay, we just changed the shape a little bit by multiplying by that coefficient of 2. And what that did is it took all of our y values and just multiplied them by 2. That's all that happened. Okay. So let's see what happens when we put a negative coefficient in front there. What if it's negative 3 square root of x? <clears throat> Still plugging in the same x values, 0, 1, 4, 6, and 8. Okay, when we plug in 0, the answer is still 0. When we plug in 1, this time we get negative 3. When we plug in 4, this time we get negative 6. When we plug in 6, negative six point something. Thank you. Oh, negative seven, excuse me. Negative seven point three four. Um, and when we plug in eight, we have negative eight point four eight. Okay? So we're still starting at the origin, but this time instead of increasing, we're decreasing. We go down to one negative three. And four negative six. Um, and there's a base. Okay, so might be a little bit harder. It's harder for me to, to draw the curve here. Okay, but there's your square root function. All right, so our domain is still, our x values have to be bigger than zero. And I do not really care which um, notation you use, okay? Our range, however, has changed. Zero is now the maximum y value. So our range is y is less than or equal to zero. We get y value below the x-axis. Um, so to express this one in interval notation, you've got negative infinity is your minimum to zero is your maximum. Okay, that's what you're doing when you do your interval notation. It's minimum to maximum value. Okay, well, let's turn this around just a little bit. Let's put the coefficient inside of the square root function. Now, the values that we're plugging in here change a little bit. They're not the same ones that we've been plugging in the whole time. Uh, and the reason for that is to try and make it fit a little bit. Okay, so when we plug in 0, 9 times 0 is 0, so the square root of that is still 0. When we plug in 1, 9 times 1 is 9, square root of 9 is 3. When we plug in 2, 9 times 2 is 18, the square root of 18 is a little bit more than 4. 4.4, 4. 
to 4. And then we plug in 4, 9 times 4 is 36, the square root of that is 6. And then we plug in 7, 9 times 7 is 63. The square root of that is a little bit less than 8. Because 8 squared is 64, so 7.94. Okay, so plot those points. <coughs> Now I know that we did not plug in the exact same values, but we did plug in some of the same values as we did, as we just did on number three. Um, do you notice the similarities? Okay, between the y values for x equals one between the two and x equals four between the two. Okay, um, they are the same because we could rewrite the square root of nine x. Um, we could kind of decompose that. We could break apart the 9 and the x, and what's the square root of 9? It's 3. So the square root of 9x is equivalent to 3 square roots of x. So that's why 3 and 4 really are just mirror images of each other across the x-axis. So our domain for number 4 would be x is greater than or equal to 0, 0 to infinity, the range. This one goes back to y is greater than or equal to 0. Because our y values start at 0 and they increase the positive values. It's not less than. X is greater than or equal to 0. As long as as long as you plug in something that is zero or bigger, you're going to get a y value out. So that's why the domain for these has always been x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, um, let's, <coughs> excuse me, instead of multiplying by a coefficient, let's see what happens when we add something to it. Okay, let's see what happens when we add something to it. <coughs> so I'm going to go back to plugging in the same values, one, Four, 0, 1, 4, 6, and 8. Okay, when we plug in 0, this time the answer is negative 2. That hadn't happened before. When we plug in 1, we get negative 1. When we plug in 4, we get 0. When we plug in 6, we get uh, negative 2 plus the square root of 6. Point four 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 five and the square root of eight is point eight three. So again, we have not changed the shape, but what has happened to our graph? Why is it compared? Hmm? There are some negative y values now. Yep, there are. Um, how does this graph seem to compare to the graph of, say, number one? It doesn't start at the origin. All of the y values are two less, right? All of the y values are two less. Instead of being zero, zero, it's zero, negative two. Instead of being one, uh, one, it's one, negative one. Instead of being four, two, it's four, zero. All of your y values are two less and that's because of the negative 2 in front of that square root, okay? It shifts all of your y values down 2. So the domain here is still x is greater than or equal to 0, but the range has changed. The minimum y value is negative 2, and we get all the y values greater than that. So an easy way to find the range, <clears throat> well, I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. Now, number six, notice that that plus one is outside of the square root. That's why I like to put kind of a tail on my square root symbol um, to distinguish that the x is the only thing under the square root. The plus one is on the outside of the square root, so be very careful when you are analyzing this, um, 0, 1, 4, 6, and 8, that if you're plugging it into your calculator that you close the